Hi everybody, I'm HP and today we're going to talk about playing blues with two guitars. You, you ever had this situation where you, where you want to play with a friend of yours playing guitar too? So how shall you play with two guitars? And this is what this lesson is a little bit about. Actually... <laughs> I want to give you a few ideas because playing with only two guitars is a little bit different than when you play in a band because then more or less one guitar has to play orchestral in this case like this or the two guitars have to play in a way that it somehow connects with each other and give this whole sound and also soloing with only a guitar as a uh, rhythm section is a little bit different and there you have to um, more pay attention uh, to your expression and the way you're gonna play so um, what does that mean I'll give you a slight idea now I switch to a lead sound and switch on the backing track and um, just let you see what I mean and so on yeah that's so more or less the idea and um, first we're going to check out the rhythm guitar and um, afterwards um, rhythm guitar we won't spend too much time because you can play any kind of rhythm guitar just that you get an idea how this rhythm guitar is played and then we switch to how soloing works here this kind of expression which is needed also we try to talk about the fx section and uh, the FX section, most of you think the FX, FX section is in your uh, in your pedals or whatever, but it's also on the fretboard. We're going to check how we work with it. See, stuff like this. So let's talk about the rhythm guitar. It's actually it's in A, and it's played with finger picking, and it's a little bit kind of a jazzy, but also bluesy. Jazzy and bluesy, bluesy um, way of playing rhythm guitar. Very cool one and some cool ideas. So let's check it out first. and so on now let's check out what's um, happening here um, on the A it's a normal blues uh, 12 bar blues form so we have 4 bars of A7 and in this case we play this little lick here 5, 6, 5, 7 and then we have the chord A13 but this time with the open A string and A7 Oh, so that was a mistake. Second bar, we switched to D7. <laughs> so it's, um, uh, it's a 12 bar blues 4 with a quick change. And then we go... This one here. Now we switch to D9 here in the fifth. Fifth with the, in, with the middle index in the fourth. And now the first motif is played like this. 5, 7, 5, seven. Back to 5, to D9, back to A. 
twice back to D now a variation 5, 7 5, 8, 7 and now we play D9, 13 and D9 back to A Same thing again. Now when we come to the E7 chord, this little lick here, 5, 7, 9, with this fingering I'm using here, 9, and then we skip the G string, go on the D string, and then open E string. On the D. Same thing, just two, two frets below. But in this case, we don't have any open strings, so we have to grab it here with the index finger in the fifth. And then the ending phrase, five, seven, five, and now comes the trick, five, seven, five, eight, and now you make, have to bar, make the bar it, huh? because you make three notes in the fifth. And then, seven six and open e string so we are at the end so on. Now we come to what everybody is waiting for now. The lead guitar. So now we grab our pick and now let's first check out the sound settings here. Um, I have distortion level like on 6 or 7 or maybe 5, also 5 till 7 depending on the distortion uh, which you would select it. Uh, I'm using an AXFX2 um, processor and then I use the orange amp here on gain level 5. Then I have a delay setting here, feedback level is on 40%. See, I have three repeats. Pretty high, and now when we play the delay, the delay, the tap delay is setting on the tempo of the song. So this is the tempo one. This is the tempo. Set the tap delay on this tempo because when you play notes, now the trick is, the trick is when you. When you work with delay, actually the, you have to be precise at the beginning of the note, and but especially at the ending of the note. So if this is the tempo, well, then like you should end up, if you can, on on a on a, on the beat of any on any kind of beat. So if you play something, because then the ending repeats itself and gives this white sound. You can compare without delay. Very dry. Doesn't have the same effect. Let's check it out with delay and without delay. Now without delay. Now with delay. Much better, huh? So this is the first really um, very um, important trick or tip you need to know here. Just you can also, if you play with two guitars, you have to be the lead guitars be very precise. So it's very good. I mean, if you're not too much into technical stuff, 
it's a you still can play very cool stuff if you're re very tight on the beat so duck duck like this and try to work on each note see it's very cool stuff let's check it out just play on quarter notes you can also play, play long notes but when you end the note make kind of a, an impulse that the note is ended also with the vibrato this, when you begin the note the softer vibrato and at the end give extra extra vibrato to end the note See, that's actually the trick. Now when you play on the beat and you play any kind of expression, things like also bendings, that was on like this, this little example. I just played the bending here in the 7th fret in the A minor pentatonics. just on the beat, but what I did, because I had a lot of time to think about, I really, um, uh, I could uh, concentrate on the tone, so I, I made a little dynamic shift, in, in this case. See, I started without harmonics and then always added slightly a little bit more harmonic. And you do make harmonics when you just switch the pick like this and attack a little bit harder without harmonic and then you have this dynamic shift and even if you just play one note on the beat you have a great movement in this whole thing Whatever you do, try to get these movements in it. Don't play too many notes. Also try to play pretty dynamic, so you attack hard. And then you attack soft. <clears throat> try to really work out extremes. Attack really hard and give a really hard vibrato and then softer when I play soft I even hold the pick a little bit loose that it doesn't drop out of my hand I still need to hold it a little bit but it nearly drops out of my hand and when I play more then I hold it harder and attack harder So let's check it out. Play dynamic. Maybe start soft. See now how I added this dynamic shift. Another great um, method for expression in this case is a legato play. What I mostly do when I, I go even more soft from this very low thing, I go even less, then I don't attack at all. I just tap it in. Try it here and maybe here as an example. Five, seven, nine. I don't attack, attack, attack at all. See, this is my other hand. I can um, 
I don't know, do things with my nose. This time if I want, I'll make a little show here. Or a, a wave to the public. That's pretty hard. <laughs> anyway. It's very cool stuff. Then you play like this. See, then I switch into legato playing. That is very cool in this case, as an example. This is all played legato. See my hand here. And go back to attacking. But really, um, what is very important when you play only in a duo situation, um, try to uh, this ex exercise we did at the beginning on play on quarter notes is very very important because you have to be very precise on the quarters. And then when you're precise and you can play dynamic, then you can add some little runs. I don't know whatever. I mostly do legato stuff to make runs here because for me it sounds more smooth, like example. Didn't attack at all on the first note. I just attacked the first note and the rest was legato. That's very cool. Didn't attack at all. Also, this is cool, just keep it going like this. You can create a tone like this. Sounds a little bit noisy, but it's really cool. Also, try to exaggerate with the vibrator, like here. But once again, if you don't have your basics together, because I um, went out of time here, even went out of tone, but ended up exactly on the beat. And then there came the, 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 the delay behind, and then you have this, again, this, this, this dynamic mo uh, shift. That's actually the trick. Whatever you do, you can go in extremes, but come back normally. <laughs> And then um, the audience hears that you have control over what you're playing. That's really cool stuff. Yo, I think that you now um, <laughs> got the idea maybe behind the whole thing. Um, playing in a blues duo situation with your friend or f even girlfriend if she plays guitar. Or boyfriend if you are she and play guitar. <laughs> Whatever, um, this is the situation where um, you really have to be more precise on the expression, especially on the lead guitar. Uh, the normal, uh, the, the rhythm guitar, as I showed, is not so hard because it's this typical orchestral playing, which is usual in jazz or blues, but the lead guitar is a little bit more different, it's be more expressive. I mean, even in a normal lead situation, you can be expressive as you can, as much as you can. But here it's even more important, here you have to be very precise on the... <laughs> stuff like this. That's the idea of the lesson of today. I hope you love it and keep it going. <laughs>